As we age, we may encounter lumps or growths on the different organs of our body. One place that these growths or nodules may appear is the thyroid gland. Most thyroid nodules are benign, however, until they are proven to be benign, their presence can cause anxiety for patients. Until recently, thyroid nodules were generally discovered by a patient at home or by a physician during a routine physical exam. Now most nodules are discovered incidentally on imaging studies such as a chest CT scan, an MRI of the cervical spine, or a Doppler ultrasound study of the carotid arteries. Most thyroid nodules are benign and only about 5 to 15 percent turn out to be cancer. However, the likelihood of having cancer also depends on certain risk factors, such as age, gender, family history, and previous radiation exposure to the head and neck. A middle-aged woman with a thyroid nodule may have as low as a 3 to 4 percent risk of cancer, while the risk is about twice as high in men, even higher in children and young adults, and highest in the elderly. Evaluation of most thyroid nodules usually includes an ultrasound of the thyroid, routine blood tests, and if necessary, a biopsy. Blood tests are used to detect thyroid hormone levels circulating in the body. Generally, thyroid nodules do not make thyroid hormone and are called non-functional or cold. However, some thyroid nodules do make excess thyroid hormone and are called autonomous or hot. High levels of thyroid hormone in the blood indicate hyperthyroidism, meaning the thyroid is overactive, and unusually low levels indicate hypothyroidism, meaning the thyroid gland is underactive. Another diagnostic thyroid scan may be used to further evaluate the thyroid to find out if it is non-functional or autonomous, meaning cold or hot. Only about 5% of patients will need a thyroid scan. If the thyroid blood tests are normal, a thyroid scan is not routinely obtained. Hot nodules are almost never cancers, but must be treated when they cause significant hyperthyroidism. An ultrasound is always used to evaluate a thyroid nodule. The incidence of thyroid nodules increases with patient age, with roughly 50% of women having nodules in their 50s. Since nodules are very common, they shouldn't always be biopsied, especially when they are very small. However, nodules that are suspicious, based on ultrasound characteristics, should be further evaluated with a biopsy because there is a greater risk that they are cancer. Endocrinologists and surgeons may disagree on which nodules should be biopsied. However, generally, nodules without suspicious characteristics that are less than 10 to 15 millimeters in size, about a half an inch, could be followed without a biopsy. Nodules greater than 10 millimeters, and in some circumstances even over 5 millimeters, with suspicious ultrasound characteristics are biopsied. Most of these nodules are benign. However, a personal history of radiation exposure to the head or neck region, or a family history of thyroid cancer, will increase the risk that a thyroid nodule is cancer. If a physician determines that the nodule should be biopsied, the patient will have a fine needle aspiration biopsy, also called an FNA. This short office procedure can be done by endocrinologists, surgeons, radiologists, or pathologists in about 10 to 20 minutes. After washing off the neck, a local anesthetic is injected under the skin, and a very thin needle is injected into the nodule to remove a tiny amount of tissue. Typically, three to six passes are done, and the specimen is then examined under a microscope. It usually takes several days to receive the results of the biopsy. Currently, most biopsies are done using ultrasound to guide the needle directly into the nodule so that the correct sample is removed. If the nodule is large enough to feel on the neck, the biopsy may be done without use of an ultrasound. If a biopsy has insufficient material, it must be repeated. Results of this procedure will indicate that the nodule is either benign, indeterminate, suspicious, or cancer. Based on this information, a physician will determine the best course of treatment.